Today's shir is Lilin Lishvas Rocha Leav Shachayin Tzela Shalom. We are continuing our honorable mention in our pursuit to try and avoid Lashon Hara, to be smirched, to gossip, and uh, little techniques today to try and avoid and bust gossiping. Uh, one important rule regarding Lashon Hara is that it's very important to try and spend more time not talking about other people, but trying thinking and focusing upon ourselves. Uh, ultimately, there's only one person in the world that we can improve, spend all our time and our energy speaking about other people. Uh, screaming and shouting has never improved anyone, and yet and yet we engage in these things. So, if nothing else, maybe through the vehicle of Na'aleh, uh, we can try and improve. I'm going to quote, uh, in I think two more classes from today, uh, how the irony is, how Rav Chaim, well, again, we're quoting ourselves a little bit in advance, but Rav Chaim Salavechik used to say, uh, he gave a, a shmuz on Shabbos Shuba, the Shams between Rosh Hashanah and Kippur, and he said, I'm just speaking to Rav Chaim, I'm talking to myself. If you want to eavesdrop, very good, but I'm talking to myself. And Rav Salanter said that uh, when you give a talk, if only one person has improved, it's worthwhile, even if that one person is yourself. So we're talking about matters of improving ourselves, and our third class from today will be regarding how to, criti- how to give critique. And uh, one of the things, one of the rules of critiquing is you cannot give critique unless you yourself have improved in this area. I hope I'm worthwhile. I'm trying. If nothing else, for the course of this course, I'm trying to improve myself. So again, the focus of Lister is trying to improve yourself. You point your finger at someone else, you're pointing three fingers at yourself. And this will help regarding the Shon Hara as well. Don't try and critique and speak about other people. See what you can do to try and improve yourself. Okay, now there are benefits in observing the laws of the Shon Hara, independent of the fact that you'll be observing the law. You're doing what God wishes you to do. You're not going to be destroying lives and disrupting unions. Uh, other benefits include, it's very hard to be in possession of scandalous material without trying to spread it. But that's no legitimization. That's no reason to say just because of the fact it's hard to withhold. Uh, we have to realize the fact that we're giving information we are to have the kind of scrutiny that we expect from a lawyer, not scrutiny, the kind of discretion that we expect from a lawyer, from a psychiatrist, from a medical person, to be very discreet and never to divulge information that's personal. People think that a secret is only something, is a secret, yeah, a secret, people think a secret is you tell only one person at a time. Incorrect. Uh, the laws of the Chavz Chaim depicts regarding the Hilchas Shmir Saloshin is that if someone tells you something confidential, you may not reveal to someone else if you don't know if it's told confidentially, you must assume, unless it's very obvious that this is public information, to keep the material confidential. That's very important. Now, I was privileged to learn by Shlomo Zaman Orbach, Zatzal. Shlomo Zaman was so particular to keep people's privacy private. There were times over his house, and he would pull me by the scruff of my shirt into a room I shouldn't see who else was in the room. It wasn't my business. Uh, regarding Shidduchim, which I'm involved in, how important it is to keep matters confidential. Okay, learning to control our tongues, and here I'm uh, sort of basing my material on this fabulous work by Rabbi Joseph Telushkin. Uh, it's got to be the most difficult, well, and he's basing on the Chafetz Chaim. And the organ which we, I don't know if it's an organ or a muscle, probably a muscle, the, the muscle which we exercise the most is our tongue. How much better would it be if we work on other muscles, particularly aerobically, you know? Let's work on other muscles and leave the muscle of the tongue. Let, let's get it a little fat and not, not so worked out and so lean. Uh, self-control is so important. It'll make you a more in the, a successful individual if you learn to control your tongue and not be so busy speaking about other people. Okay, now the, furthermore, observing the laws of the Shantara demands good judgment you have to realize the same thing taken out of context or a different context could be damning or beneficial. For example, if you say that someone gave a $250 donation to charity, that's very impressive if this is a person of modest means. But if you're talking about a multimillionaire who donates $250 to charity, it's an insult. It's a character assassination. So just because you're saying something which said it's really a compliment, I'm talking about charity, use good judgment because that's very important. Now, Jewish law demands that all personal information, as we've already said, has to be dealt with with the same kind of discretion as if we are a doctor, a lawyer. Um, we have to be a, uh, there has to be a modicum, more than a modicum. There has to be people's confidentiality must be maintained. Okay. Now, let's try and do something to try and break the temptation to spread gossip. Uh, 
primarily, the primary reason why people spread negative information is because what we're trying to do, those who engage in gossip, is lower the image of the individual we're speaking about. And the first thing is always it's someone of higher social stature. We like to speak about a person who's very accomplished in sports, who has a scandal, someone who's a prominent lawyer who has a scandal.